Happy Monday there, YouTube. Hope you guys all had a great weekend. Uh, I know we did not. Our Bengals lost. Uh, so if you're from the Cincinnati area here like we are, you're probably sad. Uh, but today we are going to talk about some torque converter stuff. But before we jump into the converters, I just want to let you guys know that the giveaway is going to happen this Friday, the February 3rd, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you still have some time left to get in on it. To get entered to win that nitrous bottle, just go to the last video about the giveaway and watch that video and it'll tell you exactly how to get entered. And then we'll be doing a live drawing at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Friday. So today, as you can see, I have a few different gear and torque converters here behind me. Uh, I only run gear and converters in my builds. It's the only converters that I sell. And I'll kind of go into showing you guys a little bit of why and show you guys all of the different options that they have to offer. So let's take a few minutes here and let's dive into these torque converters. So this first torque converter here in the lineup we're going to look at is a Gearin single disc torque converter. Now the term single disc refers to the lockup clutch disc inside the torque converter. All four of these converters we're going to look at today are all lockup converters. So these would all be found behind uh, 47 RH, 47 RE, and 48 RE transmissions. Uh, the first gen style transmissions are non lockup. Uh, it's similar converter, but we're not going to get into those today. We're going to talk about the lockups. So the single lockup disc is what is found in a factory style truck. So that means that there's only one lockup clutch in this thing. And because there's only one lockup clutch, that limits the amount of power that you can safely run through these. It limits the amount that you can tow because of the wear and tear of the weight. And this converter, uh, I would rate to about 500 horsepower max. Anything above that is really asking a lot of a single lockup clutch, and that's where you really need to step up into a triple disc converter. With these gearing converters, all of the converters that they build are a billet cover. They don't build any converters that are using a factory uh, stamped steel cover, and that gives you more uh, surface area for the lockup clutch. It gives it more rigidity. It makes the converter stronger and also helps uh, protect against converter ballooning. All of the gearing converters have a drain plug at the top here and with that drain plug they stamp what the stator is in this converter so that identifies the stall speed uh, so if you have a gearing converter that's installed in your truck and you want to know what stall speed it is you can roll the engine over until you see the drain plug up there and then there will be a series of numbers stamped on it uh, later in the video we'll get in and talk about uh, what those numbers mean and talk about stall speed a little bit but single disc converter good for 500 horsepower or less uh, less than 10,000 pounds of towing. If you're towing around seven or 8,000 pounds, that converter work really well for you. I have plenty of these things in stock. I keep all of the converters that we're going to talk about today in stock, ready to go for anybody that might need one. Next up is a pair of gear and triple disc converters here. Uh, the converter on the left is a standard triple disc converter. Uh, these converters are great converters. Uh, they are good to a thousand horsepower very easily. Uh, this is something that if you're towing heavy, you're going to want anything over 10,000 pounds. I consider towing heavy. Uh, and you get up to the 20, 25,000 pounds, that's towing very heavy. And that is where you very much need to have a triple disc. Uh, because, like we talked about with the single disc, the triple disc means that there are three lockup clutches. Three lockup clutches increase the surface area of the lockup allowing it to hold more power and more abuse from towing heavy. Just like with the single disc converter, this is a billet cover, help designed to prevent against converter ballooning and giving more rigidity for the lockup clutch area. Uh, the triple disc converters come in lots of different stalls. As you can see, all of the gearing converters come with new torque converter bolts, and it's important that you use the torque converter bolts that are supplied, because if you use a factory torque converter bolt, they're actually a longer thread shank, and they can bottom out into the billet cover before they actually torque all the way, not only allowing slip in between the flex plate and the converter, but also putting a high spot in the billet plate, which can uh, directly push on the lockup clutches and put high spots on the lockup clutch and prematurely burn them up. As you see, these converters are all drilled for 12 bolt holes. Uh, that is so that way, if you do damage the one of the bolt holes, you can flip the converter, you can rotate it to the next set of bolt holes, 
and not have to worry about pulling the converter back out because you damaged a bolt hole. So all of their converters have that. It's a nice feature for uh, anybody that might run into a situation where you accidentally don't get a converter bolt tight enough, it backs out and it tears up a bolt hole. This converter on the right is also a triple disc converter, but this is what Garen calls an extreme duty triple disc converter. You can see that the hole spacing on the bolt pattern is a little bit different, and this is so that way you can run Garen's 12 bolt flex plate, and that allows you to run all 12 bolts in it if you choose. You can also run just six bolts if you like, but for extreme duty conditions, lots of horsepower, uh, heavy abuse, the 12 converter bolts ensure that you're never gonna have a problem uh, backing out uh, converter bolts. You'll also notice that the design of this billet cover is different than the design of this one. And that's because the Extreme Duty has more material here to protect even more against converter ballooning, to give it more rigidity for the lockup clutch area, and also allows them to run a thicker intermediate plate inside the torque converter giving it more lockup capacity and higher tolerance to heat. This converter I run in anything north of a thousand horsepower. Uh, you can get away with a triple disc north of a thousand horsepower, a regular one, but if you're serious, if you have something 1500 plus horsepower, if you've got a heavy truck that's getting a lot of abuse, the extreme duty torque converter is really, in my opinion, the best converter on the market for a 4748RE. And then last but certainly not least here, we have a Garen bolt together converter. Uh, you know it's a bolt together by all of these small Allen bolts that go around the outer diameter. That means that this half of the converter and the pump half of the converter actually bolt together. So you can service this converter yourself. You can change the stators in these converters very easily, very quickly. Uh, this is a really nice option for anybody that's really serious about drag racing with a lockup torque converter. Uh, anybody that might be doing some sled pulling, might be in some areas where they feel like they want to play with different stalls, the bolt together is, is really awesome. Or if you just don't want to have to worry about sending the converter back every time that you feel like you need to service it or you want to change something up, you can handle all that yourself. Uh, you can get the rebuild kits for these, different stators. They're a very nice piece uh, for anybody that's really serious into the, the motorsports industry. So this particular converter is actually built to go behind a Duramax. And this is a 48RE behind a Duramax using a Duramax flex plate. There's a couple different style Duramax flex plates, so that's why Garen has drilled uh, the, the converter for different style flex plate. I know the, some of the SoCal flex plates use the bigger holes. Some of the other brand flex plates that are out there use smaller holes. So it's really nice that they accommodate different style flex plates for this kind of application. They also, of course, make these for just a Cummins application. Cummins application looks very similar, except for the ring gear of the starter will actually be welded to the converter here. And then the flex plate itself will just be uh, a simple flex plate with no converter ring gear on it. And other than that, they directly bolt into a 48. You do not have to do any modifications with your engine adapter or the transmission side to run a bolt together torque converter. So now that I've shown you guys a few of the different gear and converter options that we have available, let's talk a little bit about stall speed and how that affects each one of these converters. So starting with a single disc converter, uh, really there's only going to be about three different stall options currently that you're going to be able to get for the single disc, and that's because you don't want to go too loose of a stator, you don't want to have too loose of a stall with a single disc torque converter. The looser the stall, the more you're asking of the lockup clutch when it's applied. So we like to keep the single disc stuff uh, either in stock stator, which would be a 17SS, or lower than stock, which would be a 15SS. Uh, there's also a DA option, uh, which would be like built off of a Dodge Allison core. And that's a great converter for if you have a stock truck that maybe has uh, some small injectors, maybe a very small uh, aftermarket upgraded turbo, just something to be a little bit tad bit looser than stock, but still drive nice like stock. 
uh, that's what we run in any of our single disc stuff. The triple disc stuff is where you can start to get into the higher stall stuff. Uh, on a normal triple disc, uh, you could do any of the stalls I just mentioned, along with uh, 18SS. Uh, we can do a 17 minus 150, 17 minus 250. There's several different stalls that we can get into with the triple disc because we can go higher on that because we have the added protection of the three lockup clutches. So when lockup is commanded, it's a lot easier on three clutches than it is one when you have a high stall and you're dragging the engine RPM way down. And then the extreme duty triple disc is just an added layer of protection beyond that. Uh, we can do the same stalls in that converter uh, with just the added peace of mind of knowing that you even have even more strength in that lockup clutch area. And then same with the bolt together. The bolt together we can do any single stator that there is out there. So let's talk a little bit real quick here about stators. I know that it's very common in the industry to talk stall speeds, a 2000 stall, 2300, 2800 stall. Uh, and those are really just blanketed terms. And so when you call me and you're ordering a converter from me or you're ordering a transmission build from me, we're not gonna necessarily talk about stall speeds. We're, depending on if you're ordering a race transmission, we're gonna talk about boost versus starting line RPM. We're gonna talk about converter efficiency at different points in the run. Uh, but if you're just a street truck guy, we're gonna talk about what your turbo setup is, what your engine setup is, what your truck weighs, what gearing that it has, what you mainly do with the truck, because all of these are gonna factor in to what stator design we go with. A, the stator is what primarily dictates the stall speed of the torque converter. And not every torque converter is gonna stall exactly the same in different combinations. If you have a 12 valve truck with a big single 88 millimeter turbo that you only drag race, you're gonna need a far different stator than a 5'9", 12 valve guy that has a stock turbo. And because of the way that these two very different combinations make power and make torque, we could put the same exact converter, the same stator, in both combinations, and they will both stall very differently. The bigger turbo race 12 valve is going to have a much lower engine stall speed because it doesn't have the torque to drive through the converter. So that might get stuck at 1800 rpm where it won't make any more power because it doesn't make the torque to push past the converter but the stock truck over here with the stock 12 valve you can go 2200 with it with the same converter because it has lower torque it has a higher torque at a lower rpm which helps drive through the torque converter and this is why you can't just blanketly say this is a 2300 stall this is a 2500 stall because every single different combination out there is going to act a little bit different. Now, fortunately, because we've done this so much uh, and Garen has such good converter designs, their, their designs will cover a large variety of different trucks. So if you call me up and you say, hey, I got a 5.9 common rail truck with an S475 on it. I like to drive the truck all the time. I drag race it every now and then on the weekends what's going to be a good stator design for me i'm going to tell you an 18 ss you could also call me with a 67 truck that has a 88 millimeter turbo on it that you street drive less but do still street drive and you mainly race it at the racetrack and we can sell you the same 18 ss converter because that engine is going to act similar to the way the 5.9 acts with that same converter, even though it is a bigger combination. So it really comes down to experience of knowing these different combinations, knowing how they're gonna act, and that's why you can't just say, oh, this is a 2800 stall converter, this is a 2300 stall converter. Uh, we like to match converter stall as close to tight uh, as possible the more efficient that the torque converter is outside of lockup is the less amount that you're com that you're asking of lockup when it's commanded you're not asking as much of the lockup clutches so 
a say 17 minus 250 is a loose converter uh, that might stall somewhere in the ranges of 2600 to 3000 uh, depending on your combination and that is going to be a lot harder on the lockup clutches than say an 18 SS which is only going to stall you know say 22 2400 depending on your combination and if you don't need the 17 250 you're just putting added wear and tear on the lockup clutch over the 18 SS and this is where it all comes back to experience and being able to ask a transmission builder or a converter builder what they recommend because they have done this with so many different customers and different combinations that they know exactly what you need to get so uh, as far as these numbers that I'm throwing out here these 17 and these SS's and all this stuff we can break that down really simply for you these are essentially the IDs of the stator design. A 17 SS is a stock stall. So that's a stock stator uh, that was found in you know, 47, 48 REs. And it is a 17 blade count. The amount of blades, the angle of the blades, the design of the blades, all matter in how that converter reacts. It's all going to change the stall speed. It's going to change when it gets efficient, how it gets efficient. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it. So a 15 SS has less blades. It's a stock stator from another application with less blades. Because it has less blades, it acts tighter. The 18 SS is another stock stator from a different application, has more blades than the 17. Because of that, it acts a little looser. The cool thing about the 18 SS is that it will actually spool similar to a 17 minus 150, but it will be more efficient outside of lockup. So an 18 SS uh, is a, it has a very broad spectrum of what it can cover. It can cover a lot of different style applications. Uh, the 18 SS actually what I run in non lockup form in my race truck. And it's also a great converter for a 5.9 truck with a S475 on it. So <clears throat> pretty cool that it, it can blanket that kind of environment. They, when we get into the minus 150, minus 250, that's taking a 17 SS stator and cutting it down, uh, taking 150 thousandths off the top, that's also loosening it up because like I said before, the design of the stator also matters. So if you take it, you trim that stator down, that's gonna change the way it fluid couples, it's gonna make it looser, it's going to make it a little bit less efficient outside of lockup, but it's going to spool better. There's definitely applications where the 17150 is awesome. Uh, we ran fours with a 17150 in JP's truck, so it's an awesome converter. 17 minus 250, same concept, machining it down a little bit more, making it a little bit looser. Got something that's really hard to get on top of the turbos. Maybe you're in a class where you're not allowed to run nitrous. Uh, there's a lot of different applications that the 250 is good for, uh, just moving that stall speed up a little higher. Another thing with stall speed is, is when you hear people throw out these numbers, 26, 2800, that doesn't mean that the engine has to rev to 2600 before it moves. That is just a stall speed in which the engine can no longer overcome. So at 2600 RPM, the converter is too efficient. The engine does not make enough power to increase RPM beyond that without getting some movement to allow the engine RPM to increase. So a 20, say an 18 SS, uh, might stall somewhere between 22 and 2500 RPM on a street truck. Uh, that doesn't mean you've got to get to that kind of RPM to get it moving. It might only be 100, 200 RPM difference over a stock stall to get the truck actually moving. And that's why uh, they don't drive a whole lot different than a stock stall. The Dodge Allison, like I talked about earlier, is essentially the same thing as a 17 SS. The problem with the 17 SS's are they're getting hard to find. Good stock Dodge converter cores are starting to dry up, so we have to come up with new ways to build those. So Gearin builds that with an Allison core with a Dodge cover, and with the Allison, with their own custom billet stators that they run, and the Allison style stators, it acts like a 17 SS, but it has a little bit it's a little bit looser to take off, and that's why if you have a truck that maybe is a, you know, a little bit above stock fuel, maybe a small turbo, that might be the perfect setup for you because it's going to allow the engine RPM to get up and get moving a little bit. The reason why turbos light 
better with looser RPM or looser stall, more RPM, is because more RPM is more air movement through the engine. So the more air you can get in, the more air you can get out, the faster you can get that engine RPM up, the quicker you're gonna be able to light that turbo. So there's a lot of stuff that we could talk about with torque converters, but I feel like this is a, a good starting point for people that might have some questions about which converter they should run, what a stall speed is, what these stator designs mean. And uh, I wanted to give you guys a good in-depth detail, not just a little short about, hey, these are the different converters that we can have. These are the different converters we can build you, the different converters that I stock and sell and why. And I can help you guys figure out what you want to run for your builds. So appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this one. Hopefully some of you guys find it informative. And like always, guys, we'll catch you next time.